This one's gonna piss some people off. <laughs> Here we go. How to make your Fuji GFX files look exactly like Hasselblad X2D files. So I shot the bulk of this video previously for a medium format rant, but I thought the tutorial was useful enough that it should stand on its own in a separate video in case you just wanted to watch that part. In a nutshell, you can turn GFX files into X2D files and vice versa. You could also turn Leica SL3 to Sony A7R5 files and vice versa using this technique. These linear profiles are extremely powerful and the guy that makes them, Tony Kuiper, is into it clearly because <laughs> he makes these profiles for pretty much every camera on the market that you would want a profile like this for. So with that, here's the tutorial. Okay, so you go to this website by Tony Cooper Photo, Cooper Photo. Not sure how to pronounce it, but he's great. Uh, it's goodlight.us slash linear dash profiles dot html. Um, and he has this really nice explanation uh, talking about shooting in manual and that uh, each profile he's made is camera specific. So it will only work for your camera if it's in the repository. Um, you can make your own, but uh, uh, I think Tony has done such a good job. He's basically done it for you. <laughs> so then you click here to jump to camera specific linear profile downloads, and it goes to all these different cameras. He's got everything from Canon to DJI to Fuji to some, you know, cell phones to Phase One, Leaf Aptus. <laughs> um, uh, but for me, at least, importantly, Leica, Sony, you know, Hasselblad, Fuji, Canon, the ones that, you know, us photographers use. And he keeps this list very up to date. As you can see here, he's got the X-T50, he's got the X-106, he's got the 100S Mark II, um, he's got the X GFX 100, 102, uh, just, you know, any, any new camera you could want. He's got the Leica SL3 on here. He has, he has the IQ 150 here for phase one. And then of course for Hasselblad, he's got the, uh, X2D. Um, and so just to show you here, you click on whatever camera you want, right? And then, you, okay, so you have to there's a button you got to click. Uh, I, I agree to the terms. And then, um, you know, you go to the profile you want. It down. It, it adds to the cart here. I'm going to add a couple that I don't have. You hit checkout and then you go through the checkout process. I cut this part out because I'm not giving out my information, but it's free. Um, and then you have these guys on here. So then you go into your email here. I use Gmail, and you can see, you can download these profiles. They go, I have them go right to my download folder. And then you can, you get five attempts to download it, you hit download. And then you go to Lightroom, Adobe Lightroom. This works in Adobe Classic also, but I'm just gonna use it here um, because th this is gonna be uh, a little easier to show, but it works the exact same way. So you go up here to file, you go to import pro import profiles and presets, and then boom, there are all your different um, your different uh, uh, presets. Um, I already downloaded the GFX S2 and the X2D, so I'm gonna just to show you, I'm gonna put in the X106, the GFX100 Mark II, and then you hit, Im so I had this in my downloads folder, but wherever your downloads go, that's where you do, click on them, you hit import, takes a second, tells you it's done, and that's it, okay? Uh, now, just to show you how this works, I'm gonna take two uh, files of a beautiful model, put them into Lightroom, add two photos. Okay, so if you look at Get Info, you can see this is the GFX100, and then next to it here is the Hasselblad. If you ask me, the Hasselblad right now looks nicer. Uh, the color is a little bit richer, a little more accurate, I would say. Um, you know, we, you, you, I might need to control for exposure a little bit here. The, the GFX100 is a little underexposed. 
But um, as you can see here, pretty similar settings. Uh, 55 millimeter, 180th a second at f2.8, ISO 800. And then here, 55 millimeters a second, 190th a second, f2.8, one, uh, you know, ISO 800. Kind of interesting that the, the Hasselblad seems to have done a better job with the exposure than the Fuji here. And, the, and to me, to my eye, you know, the Fuji is like a little too red in here. This blue is a little too dark. Um, and I'll fix the exposure, but I, I just want to show you the raw without touching anything, okay? So um, then you go here. You click on these, or you can go into the, the here, uh, but it's I think it's easier to do it this way. You click right here where it says profile these these four squares, and now when you scroll down, there's a section that and there's the Ted Four presets. Nice job, Ted. Uh, um, there's something called profiles, and you'll see there's a linear profile for the Fuji. And immediately you put it on the Fuji, and you see that horrible red disappeared. Hit the um, you know the 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 darkness of the of the color of the shirt has disappeared. And all of a sudden it looks pretty darn accurate, but flat and a little dark, right? And so, you know, here's the Hasselblad without it. And just to compare, there's the GFX with the linear. And then same thing here, I can put the Hasselblad linear profile on there and you can see the difference here. So I put it on and now they look awfully similar, don't they? <laughs> so now I can, you know, uh, fix that exposure a little bit, add a little saturation, you know, um, maybe cool it off a little bit there. Um, same thing here. Exposure was good on this one, add a little saturation. And, you know, I think you would be really hard pressed once you finish tweaking these, you know, um, to tell the difference between the two, honestly. Um, just, you know, uh, it's pretty amazing. I'll put them side by side here. All of a sudden, the GFX is maybe even looking a little better. So I can see if I can fix this a little bit. So yeah, I mean, these, these photos are basically identical now, right? I mean, you know, uh, minor things, uh, just pretty incredible here. So I do, I think this is totally a game changer. Um, you know, the this makes the GFX so much of a better camera, so much more of a commercially viable tool. Um, and it makes it so that, you know, the uh, um, the playing field is very level between the Hasselblad and the GFX. Um, it, uh, you know, it means that uh, you can spend $2,000 on a 2035 rather than $6,000. So, uh, yeah, uh, exciting stuff here, I think. I do still think the Hasselblad lenses render a little bit nice, more nicely, um, but I don't know if I would say it's three times nice, more nicely, <laughs> you know, especially with what you can do in post here. Uh, um, you know, it's just... It's just really pretty dope what you can do. So yeah, another interesting thing I noticed here is that, you know, um, because Lightroom is putting on distortion correction, you have to turn that off um, with Fuji. So yeah, so if you turn off distortion correction with Fuji, you get a much nicer rendering. Um, but, you know, I do still think that the Hasselblad has a slightly nicer um, lens rend rendering, but like, is it three times nicer? I don't know. <laughs> You know, they look so similar. Um, man, you know, it's just, look at this, you know, they're, they're so similar. So yeah, I do think the Hasselblad still has a slightly nicer rendering, but like it is so freaking close um, that no one would notice. And if you're printing, you wouldn't notice. Um, you know, uh, I, I just don't know if it's worth the money when you apply these profiles. So uh, I have a few more things to test, including the um, including the whole tilt shift deal. But I wanted to share this because I thought this was a pretty exciting find. Big thanks to Tony Kuiper. Uh, and now back to the video. Just for funsies, I applied this to a few more files. Can you tell which one is camera A and which one is camera B?
Camera A was the X2D. Camera B was the Fuji GFX. Could you tell the difference? Could you tell which camera is which? I don't think I really could. <laughs> so this is an interesting outcome, right? This means that, you know, if you use this technique and you edit using this technique regularly, the whole color science part of digital photography is basically removed. Image quality in large part is largely removed from the conversation with the most recent digital cameras. You can get an X-H2 to look like a Canon R5. You can get a Leica SL3 to look like a Sony A7R5. You can get a Hasselblad to look like a you know GFX. If the sensor size and cameras are similar, you can basically level the playing field with this so that you can really focus when making a camera buying decision on what camera you like to use. Do you like the interface? Do you like the ergonomics? Do you like the overall user experience? So for me, that's got me really kind of back in the Fuji camp for a lot of things, uh, cause I just like using Fuji cameras. I like their interface when you're using the camera. The menus need work, but when you're using the camera, it has everything I want. It's got a distance scale. It's got highlight blinkies. When you're recording a video, a big red box shows up, plus a blinking light, plus you have tally lights, plus you have mic levels that don't go away. Your, your, uh, you know, your balance bar, your level doesn't go away while you're filming video, all these things. There's waveforms in here. Uh, so, uh, you know, they just really have it figured out. Their distance scale is the best for photography. Um, the way their exposure meter works is really easy to use and it's in the right place on the screen, you know, all these things. Um, you can customize like every button on these on the Fuji cameras. So, you know, just really uh, um, providing my thoughts here. So could you tell these files apart? Have you used linear profiles before? What did you think? Are you using them now? I wish you had told me if you had, because I would like to found this about a year ago. It saved me a lot of time, <laughs> a lot of pain. <laughs> um, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.